2024, the most popular type of attack was a private key leak, according to Chainalysis. And you may think you're really smart and be able to avoid these attacks, but I bet you you're a little bit more susceptible than you think. If you're a new developer, we've seen time and time again, a lot of new developers fall for the classic LinkedIn interview scam, where a fake LinkedIn recruiter will message you on LinkedIn and say, hey, oh my God, your profile looks so good. I'm gonna offer you $180,000 a year because I think you'd be perfect for the job. And you go, great, what do I gotta do? And they say, all you gotta do is pass our coding challenge. And they send you a link to some code and they said all the instructions are in there. What new developers do is they clone the GitHub repo, they try to run the code and <gasps> that code, that repo had malicious code in it and you have just been hacked. Or if you're not a new dev, maybe you're an advanced dev, there's a good chance that you can get hit by supply chain attacks. Just this year, just a few months ago, there was a Solana Web3 hack. And if you downloaded it and ran NPM start or NPM or node go or whatever, JavaScript crap you're running these days, you could have accidentally run some malicious code that would have literally scanned for your private keys, got your private keys, stolen your crypto, and then sent it to another address, all without you having any idea. And then finally, even to this day, I see some of the top smart contract auditors fall for tricks like this. Even as far back as last year in some of our first flights, we would add a line like this into some of our practice audits, where if a developer wasn't familiar with how Foundry works, they would have accidentally ran this script that allowed Foundry to run whatever type of code they wanted on their system, which again, could have done the same thing, scanned for private keys and stolen all their money. Now, these are all different attack vectors. These are all different issues, but all of these issues have at least one thing in common. And this commonality between all these is that you are running unfamiliar, unvetted code on your host machine. You're running code on the same machine where you log into GitHub, you have private keys, you have access to the internet, you have all your files and whatever else on your computer. And this is obviously dangerous. Now there's a number of different ways to help protect you against these type of attacks. And I'm going to present one of them here. However, like all solutions in security, this is not 100% foolproof. It's not a guarantee that you will be perfectly safe. There are security considerations and we'll go over those at the end of the video. So the tool that we're gonna be working with here is Docker containers or dev containers. In particular, we're gonna be working with the dev containers built directly into VS Code. A huge shout out to the Red Guild for writing an awesome blog on this. If you wanna learn more, be sure to read that as well, link in the description. Let's go over to the Lightboard. So imagine that this is your computer or your laptop or whatever you want to call it. You have your computer and your computer obviously has hardware in it and it sits on top of a host operating system, which is like Linux, Mac OS, Windows, if you are a masochist. And then of course, inside of that, you're going to have all your stuff, your network, your files, your apps, everything that you work on on your computer. Now, the issue is if you run your script with like NPM run or some bash script inside of your host machine, well, guess what it has access to? It has access to this. It is access to this, it is access to this. And as you can imagine, that's probably not a great idea. So when you download your fun little NPM packages and you don't know what the NPM code does, essentially you're giving scripts that you've not vetted access to your entire machine. So what we can do instead is have this NPM runner or, or a bash script or even a .py file in an isolated environment. And this is where Dockerized containers or these dev containers come into play. Now on the other side of things, you can have a Dockerized setup, which it's still the exact same setup. You still have a computer, obviously. You still have hardware, you still have a host OS. The only difference is now inside of your computer, so running as an app, you have this thing called Docker. And this thing called Docker, you can build containers where you create your own isolated versions of all the stuff your actual computer has. If you run this npm run thing from inside of here, like npm run, it'll only have access to what's inside this container or what you give it access to or hypothetically at least. Now with these containers, you can actually give them access to different things. So like most of the time, you're gonna give it access to your network. Maybe you can give it access to your files and that's what's called having a mounted Docker container when you give it access to your files and you mount it on top of your files, you can give it access to different apps. And this is where you want to be very specific with what you're giving access to because again, if you give your Docker container access to something, that means these little malicious scripts can eke out of this container onto these things. So what we're gonna be showing you how to use is use an unmounted Docker container so that you can keep these little scripties, these little buggies in this little thing so that you don't get attacked or you at least lower your risk of attack. Because if you run in an isolated environment, you can at least just delete the Docker container and move on with your life. But if you run it on your actual environment, then like, oh no, attack of the kitties. And we don't want that. To get started working with a dev container, you can come to the Cypher Web3 dev containers specifically to work with dev containers that already come pre-installed with things that you might need. For example, Foundry or Moccasin when you're working with smart contracts. Once you've cloned the repo, you wanna make sure that you have Docker running 
And I have the little app for Mac OS, but if you're using Linux or something else, you can obviously do Docker PS to make sure that the Docker daemon is up and running. It's typically better to work on projects in these unmounted files because if you run a malicious script, a hacker won't get access to your file system. So we'll open the foundry slash unmounted folder. We'll do a little code period. And in here we have this folder called dot dev container, which has a dev container dot JSON and a Docker file. Docker files are how Docker knows what to do when spinning up a Docker container, like what should be installed? What are the tools that you should work with? This is important because the way our Docker file is set up is that we start from a blank Linux Debian instance. And this is good because we will know exactly what libraries and packages this instance can work with because we'll define them in the Docker file. And the dev container, this is for VS Code to make working with these Docker containers much easier. This dev container in particular has these workspace mount settings, which tell VS Code to spin up an unmounted Docker container. And our Docker file for this Foundry one, will create a Linux instance. It'll give us a ZSH shell. It'll install Rust. It'll install UV. It'll install a bunch of Solidity tools. It'll install Foundry, a Darren, and that's about it. If you're not using VS Code, if you're not using VS Code, the GitHub repo has instructions for spinning this up just as a raw docking container. But if you are using VS Code and you have the dev containers extension, what you can do is you can go to the command palette and select reopen in container. And what this will do is it'll take all the settings from your dev container.json, which in here we say build using our Docker file, which has all the Docker stuff here, and it'll reopen this entire project inside of a dev container. So we'll do reopen in container. And if you look at the bottom right now, we see dev container, it gets cut off, but we're actually now running inside of an unmounted dev container. And now if I do a PWD, it says I'm in this workspace location, and this is a blank brand new location. And if I try really, really hard to access some files outside of this, I, as of today, I'm not a good enough hacker to do that. So now I have this isolated VS code running where I can, you know, clone a project and do some dumb stuff. I could do a git clone for Foundry Fund Me, and I can even open this up in a new VS code window. And by pulling it up here, zooming in, I can still see that I'm inside of my dev container. If you are using the app with this as well, can open up your Docker window and you'll see this container that's running. This is the container that my VS code, my little environment is currently running in. And if I do pull up a terminal from my host machine, not in my little VS code Docker container, and I do a Docker PS, I can now see we do indeed have a Docker container running where all my code currently is. So now I can do a forge build and a forge test since this Docker container comes with Foundry installed already. Now let's finally show you how to protect yourself against at least one of these attacks. Now way back in one of the Codehawk's first flights, we had this GitHub repo, which had something very clever in it. It had FFI set to true, which means that your Forge scripts, your Foundry scripts could run anything on your tests when running Forge tests. And we stuck in here at the bottom, this test pwned function, where all it did was call the bash command touch and then create a file called you've been pwned, remember to turn off FFI. Now FFI allows Foundry to literally run any bash script. And this one is pretty benign as it doesn't really do anything but imagine they ran a much more sinister script. For example, maybe they did leave some file behind that if you actually ran it would steal all your private keys or something. We have that same test set up in our Docker container here. And when we run forge test, it runs all of our tests and it creates this, you've been pwned, remember to turn off FFI file. Now, if you know Foundry and you go into the foundry.tml, you can just turn off FFI and you know rerun this and actually the test will fail because it'll say, hey, uh, I can't run this command without FFI. But again, this is already knowing what to look for here. This is this niche thing and doing this with NPM packages or Python packages is much harder. But what's nice, since this is an unmounted file, all we have to do this you've been pwn file is now created in this isolated environment. And back in my host environment, not in my dev container here. Once again, if I do Docker PS, I can see this here. I could just do Docker kill and paste the name. And now my dev container says cannot connect. Please reload the window. I'm going to hit cancel. And if I try to do anything in here, it's just frozen. I can't do anything. So I want to go ahead and close the window. Any windows using this Docker container. And guess what? I have essentially blown away that Docker container 
and that file no longer exists. So let's do a quick recap of everything we learned here. Number one, it's always dangerous to run code you're unfamiliar with. Number two, however, running scripts in isolated environments like Docker containers can help malicious scripts from going rampant on your computer, stealing your private keys. Number three, like everything, there is no 100% guaranteed way to be safe here, other than knowing exactly how every line of code works, including any packages or libraries that you're using, which is basically borderline impossible. So understanding some of the security implications here is also really important. For example, if you give your Docker container access to the network, maybe a malicious script runs that tries to DDoS you or DDoS somebody else or use your computer as a bot for the duration that the Docker container is running. Maybe some brilliant hacker found a way to escape Docker containers. If you do decide to mount your Docker container so that you can save your work a little bit easier, you gotta be careful about which files you give the Docker container access to. Security researchers, new devs, auditors, I highly recommend you try these out keep yourself a little bit safer out there security researchers in particular should use something like this or a virtual machine or dedicated hardware or whatever you want to do that's it stay safe out there and we'll see you next time <laughs>